Yo, what's good, y'all? In today's video, I have a subscriber requested video. Um, this video was requested to me by Fountainity. What they asked was how to make an admin panel with ban and kick and make sure that the panel is only visible to the owner. Now, the thing is, the panel I'm about to show you guys is actually, um, I actually made this panel about, damn, like three months ago, I think, and stuff. I made it. Because I, I had made it for someone, I could, like someone commissioned me to make an admin panel for them. And I had made this for them and stuff. Now I was, I've thought about it like four times about making it into an entire like, it would have to be a series, not even a video. It's like 300 lines of script just on like the main script and it, like it's a lot of stuff. But like it'd have to be like a three to four part tutorial series and stuff. If y'all are interested in that, uh, let me know. Because like the, the admin panel has like, you're able to warn people, kick people, ban, unban um teleport teleport people to you and teleport to people uh return people to certain positions freeze them unfreeze uh yeah so it has stuff like that i was thinking of making a tutorial video on it but i was like i feel like that might be like too complicated and stuff and i don't really know if people are interested in that so just let me know in the comments if you're interested in that but anyway now of course i already have this pre-made pretty much i got the file from when i made the admin panel for the, the person who asked me to make it and then I, I had to change a lot of stuff for the video and stuff since obviously the only the person only wanted banning kick right as well as certain things weren't needed and stuff right so obviously it's already like pre-scripted pre like the gui's made and stuff because that would be like a two-part video for, like if i actually did all that like starting over and stuff let alone remembering that from memory but anyway let's get straight into it though guys all right so first things first let's go ahead and knock out a remote events right so you want to make two events, command event and owner verify event. Command event is going to be used when people uh, use a command, right? And they click the button, because remember, it's admin panel. If you don't know what admin panel is, admin panel is a GUI. It's the difference between admin commands, which are like what you type. Here is where you have actual like buttons and stuff, right? So yeah, you want a command event, then you want an owner verify event. This event is going to fire every time a player tries to open the admin panel by pressing a certain key. And I'm going to get into the script to how that will work, right? So you just want those two events, and you can name those two things. Um, I guess, mm, I guess I'll show you guys the admin panel handler script, right? So it's like, like I was able to shorten it to this much. It's still 100 plus lines of script, but still. Um, by the way, all the scripts will be in the description. It's like I think it's, a, it's like, I think it's like four. I think it's like four scripts. Yeah, I think it's like four scripts total. So yeah, all the scripts will be in the description. So you don't have to worry about copying because I know it's a lot of stuff to write. But anyway. So yeah, we, so yeah, of course we have all of our remote events, right? Then we have some services that we need. We needed the band data store, um, the text service, messaging service, and then and then we have the admin panel uh, located in server storage, right? Because we're going to be duplicating it every single time a player opens. Because remember, this is a GUI only certain people are supposed to have. In this case, one person. Now the reason why usually majority of people don't really do this some people do do this for their games like they'll just they'll have like an admin list of people and stuff right now the reason i did this was because that's what the person acts the person acts only visible to the owner so considering that like only the owner is supposed to have access to it you could really just write it like like this you just have a variable on the script now a more reliable way would probably be to use the user id like you know what i mean like have owner id then the user id the roblox id then have uh and then the check would be player dot user id equals owner id that would probably be more like use like it would be a more efficient way of doing it because say the owner changes their name or something they'd have to come to the script and then change it right but anyway so when the player joins i'll basically just brief overview of how it works so when the player joins and stuff we use a pcal and stuff the first thing we're checking is to make sure that they're not banned right so we're, we're seeing if they have any banned data because pretty much if they have banned data right if they have banned data and if that banned data the first part of the banned data is equal to banned then that means obviously they're banned and if it is then it'll kick them and let's say you have been you have been banned for then banned data two two is the message that saves when you ban a player so pretty much saved to the data store saying this player got banned for so and so reason, right? So it's so it's checking, and of course we're gonna have that in a pico because obviously we want it to run over and over until it actually you know uh, works correctly, I should say. And then we have um, down here. This is the admin setup. So I use variables for this. Um, I've I've worked on tables, but I'm still working to improve it. If I do improve it, I might drop another video updated on this. But the, but the 
for the video though I use variables we have a folder called admin variables where, where I keep all the variables I keep well actually oh well, actually nothing about it you don't need these variables actually you don't need bring and freeze yeah you don't need actually you don't need these and then you don't need a cooldown this is for the original system but there's not really a need since only the owner will be using it. There's not really a need for a cooldown. But anyway, so you have your all you really need to release your target ID. Target ID is pretty much so the way the admin panel works, right? Let me go ahead and bring it over to starter GUI, right? So you guys can make your own type of admin panel GUI. This is what I made, right? This is what I got. I know like it's sized. I know it's like it's sized weird and stuff. I didn't really care about that. The point was I just needed like I just needed to work. Okay, I don't really care about that. But yeah. So the players, the player list is going to be here. It's going to have all the player names. So the way it works is you first click a player's name and then it selects the player. When you click the player's name, it changes your target ID dot value to whatever like you know player you're clicked on. And target and the target ID is the Roblox ID of that player, right? So yeah. And then this is just the while not success to it. Literally is just copying this. And it's just making this run over again if it didn't work the first time. And like I said, you guys don't need you guys don't need the uh, you don't need the freeze and bring variables, right? And you don't need the cooldown variable either, unless you have like multiple people that are uh, using it. If you if it's really just the owner, then it doesn't really make sense to have a cooldown just for the owner, right? So if we come down here, we have our kick. We have our kick, right? So pretty much the way it works is. For kick and ban, obviously we're gonna have to use a remote event because we want the reason that the player is being kicked or banned to uh, sent from the client to the server, right? Which is the message, right? That's the message. That's why they were banned or kicked, right? And then we use the messaging service. If you guys are wondering, what, like, why I'm using the uh, the messaging service and the text service and stuff. Um, it's for oh right here. It's for this type of stuff. We have to filter the message, right? Because like in a text box, a player could really type anything, and then it, it might like save it as like you know something that could get your game taken down. Like if a player says something like you know that goes against Roblox, uh, uh, what is it? Moderation system or I don't know filter whatever. But yeah, All right. So we're pretty much just filtering the message. It's just it's just a safe way to go about it, right? But obviously you have to make sure that the command is kick, right? You get all the players and your children. Then I mean, you get all of the players, right? We got the children and the players, right? And then we see if the user ID matches the target ID, and if it does, we then kick the player, and then we give them the filtered message, right? And to kick, you literally are just kicking them, like no, it's not banned or anything. Then we have ban and unban, right? Oh, I th uh, shit, I think I forgot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I actually forgot to finish this. Oh, I knew there was someone else was. I was supposed to do. Anyway, we'll, we'll finish that in a second, guys. But don't worry though. When you actually look in the description and stuff, you guys will actually see like the finished one. So don't worry about it. But anyway, so we have band down here, right? It's the same thing. We're filtering the message, and then I I uh, I made a video on this on how to send messages across servers. Obviously, when you ban someone, you, say your game is really popular and you have like multiple servers up. Obviously, you want the ban message to be sent across all those servers to check if the player is in a different server or just generally ban the player from the other servers make sure the data store updates there right so that's why you would use the messaging service right and you would have your messaging topic then you run a pcal and then a protected call i should say then you would publish it and you would set async the player's username and then you would set it to band then along with the filtered message right then crossover band you would you would put this just to be clear you would put these two in your other places right you'd put these two in your other places this is what like it listens like in a way it listens for this message right well this listens this listens for this message then that listens for that uh that message right to really put it simply right it's because it's just banning the players across all servers right but anyway um let me um Hold on, message of data. Move async. Oh, okay. All right, all right, hold on. Let me remove this real quick, right? Or let me finish this, I should say. Oh, we should just be able to do ban. That is to remove async. And then we're just needing the key. So we ban by, if I recall, we ban by the username, I think. Oh, we actually should be in by the user ID, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. So, yeah. 
So we, we put username here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And then we just remove all the, uh, pretty much the data that says like the player's band. And yeah, rem reminder, the scripts will be in the description. But yes, and then this is the verification. This is how it verifies if player name is owner and then if not player dot player GUI. This pretty much means it's just making sure the player doesn't already have the admin panel open. Because if, if you don't have this if statement, or if not statement, I should say, it'll just keep cloning itself over and over again, right? This is to make sure it doesn't do that, right? So yeah. And then when you and then when you when you close it, it destroys it. So pretty much every time you open it, you're cloning it from the uh, server storage onto the player, right? And then this is what's loading it, right? Like this is this is what appears for the playlist. This is how the playlist is handled, right? It gets all the players and stuff, and then it makes it player name button and stuff, right? And then every time you click it, it'll change the color to yellow and stuff. So that's how you know you have it selected. And then it changes the targeted value to the uh, the what is it called? The player ID of the the user ID of the player. Sorry. So yeah, that's pretty much the handler script. That's really the only real long script here. The other ones are pretty. They're, honestly, they're pretty simple. We don't have scripts there. The ban, kick, and unban have scripts. They're, they're local scripts, by the way. These three are local scripts. All we're really doing is you don't really need the prints. This is just since I was debugging it, right? So you just need the command event. It's pretty much the same thing across like all three. You're just you're sending over the type of command you're doing, and then you're sending over the text, right? But make sure your text is correct though. The, I'm using the reason text box for a ban, right? As well as the reason text box for a kick message, and then obviously unban. You don't really, well, no, you could use a reason. It doesn't really matter. But it's really up to y'all if y'all want to send over a reason or not. But I, yeah, I just did. And then you can also have this too, the uh, mouse enter, and then how you change the color. But I did the reason I didn't have this for these two is because the ban and unban these are text boxes and the text boxes. The kick script is actually a kick button, right? And stuff like. Let me make this clear. This is a button. These two are just text labels. This is just saying that that's why there's a, um a colon because it's saying like you type right there rather than there's nothing to do with this it's just telling you like that's how you ban or kick right so yeah relatively short script and then the, the last script we have is, is in starter player script it's called the admin panel opener this simply is just it just uh waits for a person to click left alt and then it'll fire the owner verify to make sure that the person trying to open admin panel is actually the owner and stuff right um, now, if you want to change the key, all you got to do is just come here to enter the key code, and then boom, you would just select whatever you want. You could just type, you could type it in if you want, whatever. You have a lot of options to choose from. But I'm just going to go with left alt for the video, right? So, yeah. Once again, make sure when you finish making your uh, UI. Oh, by the way, uh, just if you want to know how I made the UI, I just use some text labels. The blue T's are text labels. Um. These boxes are text boxes where you like type into. These are text. Wait, what are these actually? Wait, if that's a text label. Then what is this? Wait, actually, now I'm confused. <laughs> Hold on, I'm actually confused now. What is this? This is. Oh no, this is a text label. So what is this? Oh, sorry, sorry. This is a text button. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. These are text buttons, right? And then in the playlist frame, make sure you have a UI grid layout, of course. You know what I mean? So that like. It ordered everything correctly, right? And then, yeah, make sure, you, like I said, make sure you put it in server storage. You can leave everything enabled and visible since the player will be uh, opening it via uh, the the, um, the 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 keybind. So let's just go ahead and just show you guys real quick that it works. If I click left alt, boom, there we go, and you can see my name is right there. Then if I, then you guys see what I mean? If I go here, you go to my admin variables, and it matches my Roblox ID. If I, oh, I can't deselect. But pretty much, if there were multiple players in the server, I could click another server and then click a server. I could click another player's name, and then it would change the uh, ID and stuff, right? And then if I if I try doing kick, um, oh, oh, just to be clear, right? Just to be clear, right? So if you're banning somebody, right, you would put their name here. Then you would put the reason here, or actually, no, no, I'm afraid that you could put the reason here, like say, broke a rule right and then you would go in here i'm not going to do it because uh it's a whole process of trying to like because then you have to kind of like rewrite the data source script well okay you only have to change one thing but i don't really feel like having to do that so you pretty much then you would left click the ban right and then you would type in the player's name right and then when you click 
and then when you click enter when you press enter it's going to ban them and then this would be the reason right or vice versa would unban you would type in the player's username and then this would be the reason or if i kick or if i were to kick myself right broke a rule you see obviously i'll do kick because i can just rejoin after that but yeah that's pretty much how you make an admin panel with ban kick with ban ban slash unban and kick i hope this video was helpful and stuff if you guys have any comments or questions um you can leave them in the comments down below this video was helpful leave a like and subscribe links are drawn my roblox group and discord can be found in the description thank you guys for all the support you guys missed one let's get to 350 subscribers i hope this video was helpful found to me and yeah i'll see you guys